Welcome back to this special chat with the author of the book, Advice and Dissent, none other than Dr. Vaivi Reddy, former Governor of the Reserve Bank of India and economic policy maker for the country in some form or the other for 25 years, 1990 to 2015. Uh, well, uh, Dr. Reddy, uh, the current NPA problem, some would say, is because of the huge lending by banks from 2004 to 2008, some 20-25% growth in credit. Would you say the roots of this crisis go back that far? It is possible. Some sort of a hint was given by the Chief Economic Advisor uh, in, the, in the Economic Survey report. Technically, it is possible. But there are two ways of looking at it. One is, at that point of time, what was the risk of further, was, was there enough scope for constraining the credit growth by increasing the interest rate. If the, if the response of the credit is going to be virtually zero, then by increasing the interest rate, you are only affecting the credit growth. Okay. So you have to see the magnitudes. At that point of time, it was already tight. Okay. There's, a second, there's, a, there's a second thing. There's a problem, inherent problem between short term and medium term. In a developing country, unlike advanced economies, in a developing country, you want the credit penetration to increase. Medium term objective is to increase the credit to the GDP ratio. Mm -hmm. So short term cyclical capacity for cyclical movement in a secular medium term growth, it becomes very difficult to judge. That's the second okay. thing. How do you react to the fact that the Reserve Bank itself has been asked to resolve NPAs and they have begun by sending 12 people to the bankruptcy court? It happened because the, the public sector banks are owned by the company. Mm. So in the normal course, it doesn't happen so much to private sector yes. banks. Because the RBI is able to tell the owner mm -hmm. under the Banking Regulation Act, the owner is there, it's his responsibility, they have to collect. Yes. The government in a way now shifted the burden to RBI. To RBI yes. But the, the, the difference is only that it's an extraordinary situation and therefore it had to be done. Mm -hmm. The fear is that it won't be given up and there will be confusion in the relative, uh, response, relative roles. So in a way, therefore, uh, the problem of public sector banks and the accountability for the functioning of the public sector banks has been further compromised mm. by recent uh, developments. The other uh, uh, suggestion from the government to resolve the problem is consolidation of banks. Now, this was mooted in 2005-06 as well when you were governor and you speak about how the R there's just one paragraph where you say the RBI thought that that is not going to solve the problem. Uh, what is your suggestion now? You see, at that point of time, there was no serious problem of NPS. So our point was that if efficiency is a problem, then consolidation is not the natural solution. Okay. Now what is happening, you have the further problem. Yes. That's NPS. Mm. So by, you, you, you have two possibilities. Two weak banks, when they come together, does it become strong? Mm. Okay. If one strong and one weak, if they come together, it may become stronger or it may become weaker depending on which culture precise, prevails. To assume that if a strong and weak join, necessarily strong strengths will prevail in any organizational culture, it's not a good assumption. Okay. Uh, so in fact, if I have to do consolidation at a time when there are weaker banks, I'll be more careful. What would your suggestion be that consolidation should be accompanied by privatization or some scheme to improve the inherent efficiency? You see, in the, in the private in, in the industry, you are saying that if it's a sick industry, I'll sell. Why not a sick bank be sold? So those are the questions you have to ask. Again, I go back, efficient, inefficiency problem, but more important, the fiscal burden, the burden of the public sector bank is not being debated from the person's point of view. Fair point, sir. That's a debate uh, that the nation will take up, I guess, uh, in the days to come. Uh, let me come to the global financial crisis. When you are describing your uh, experience with the global financial crisis, you are referring to a meeting where central bankers met the global financial That's conglomerate. What I mean. That's what I mean. And you are uh, uh, saying that uh, you all pointed out that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the central bankers asked the conglomerates, how long do you want us right. to support you all? And uh, uh, the uh, uh, suggestion from the conglomerates was, why don't you change the accounting standard so that we don't look weak? And Cliché is furious. He said, we see that there is a patient with a fever. We have to give some treatment. You are advising that we should change the thermometer and declare the patient healthy. How does that help? And the worst is what the conglomerates answered. The financial banks, I don't know whether it was Goldman Sachs or Citibank or HSBC who answered. If the thermometer is changed and the patient is declared normal, there is a good chance that the patient will feel more confident. So they actually told central bankers 
to change accounting standards. How? I mean, how? Are you, just see, in the recently, did you not find some of the bankers asking that uh, the NPA guidelines should be changed? Okay. How do you defend NPA? They are, how, why are you so shocked? At this moment, you, in the recent few days back, you saw there's a demand. In fact, one of the acquisitions was that earlier years, the NPA definition was tightened to 91 days, which is a global norm. So that is not very strange. That's happening now also. Okay. Okay. But you are pretty scared of the way financial, global financial banks behaved. And that was why you resisted them coming into India too early? You see, uh, uh, let me put it differently. Subsequently, has it been open? Yes. No, it hasn't. So therefore, the label that I have, that I was conservative, and therefore the foreign banks did come, I don't know, you have to view it from the fact that after the conservative banker left, subsequently also they didn't come back. No? So I think one has to be clear about that. But the fact is, yes, a decision was taken, mm -hmm. and you must give credit to the government that they accepted. Your... They accepted my dissent and later my resubmissioning of advice is that this is premature. Okay, well, sir, we are running out of time. Uh, so let me ask you some of the things that you have not uh, discussed very explicitly in your book. Yes. One, who is your favorite finance minister? In fact, somebody else asked us questions. There are only two finance ministers who fear my words. Well, uh, you did work About with... About Sachin Singh also, yes. yes. Manmohan Singh also, yes, yes. I think I would say that each one of them... Is, and well, let me first say, India has been singularly lucky in having extraordinarily fine finance minister. Historically, if you just take compare the average cabinet minister in India and the finance minister of India, they, are they stand out. They stand out. Okay. The only part I had hinted, they stand out in a way that they don't have much of political backing also. Oh, yes. If you just see. And where a couple of times people's political backing came, then the government was in trouble. Mm -hmm. I refer to that indirectly. Among the people, mm -hmm. if you just go back, Mr. Chidambaram, mm -hmm. he's, he's, in fact, I would say that in, in many ways he's almost an outstanding technocrat. Yes. His knowledge, his promptness, his depth of analysis. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, and that is a strong impact he makes. And the way he brought about so many legislations, that's one contribution. Then b before him was Jeshwan Singh. Mm -hmm. See, Jeshwan Singh was a statesman. He was interested in the big picture. So he picks up people or trust people who can deliver, and he has delivered. And I think, given the complexities, both of them have contributed well. Before Jaswan Singh, we had another low profile but high performing finance minister, Eshwan Singh. If you just see the fundamental changes that he brought about, uh, he was a great reformer, but he had the advantage of having been not only a bureaucrat, but in two political parties. Yes. That's a bit of a left and a bit of a right. Okay. So, but this is a diplomatic answer. You haven't said who is the best. No, there's nothing like the best or right. I mean, you know, I'm saying each is ten, and in a system, each imparts a new mm. dynamic. Okay. And I think each of them have contributed enormously to our Okay. So I have to very quickly revisit the issue of uh, inflation targeting. Yes. Now, uh, would you say that at least the MPC? serves a very important purpose in that it increases the autonomy of the RBI. You have to influence, influence many fellows. Uh, yes, yes, it, 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 it could, it could, it could, it, but it depends on who influences whom. Okay. I mean, in, in, in the sense, uh, what, the, the, the MPC, they have represented, uh, the, the real issue is the group decision making is better than individual decision making, if that is the point. Mm. But technically under the RBI Act, technically even mm. before, mm. the whole vote could be taken into uh, Conference, okay. except that the board composition was not experts. Okay. So today there is a slight difference. Today, MPC is essentially experts. Yes. Inflation targeting is an issue. So in some senses, if it is the dominant objective, then the central banking is looking at inflation, mm. so and everything else becomes subordinate. The way full service central bank of RBA of the olden days was structured. It had social workers, it had different points of view, okay. it represented society. Mm -hmm. So now, in a way, though it's not conceded, there's a paradigm shift mm -hmm. in what is expected from the Reserve Bank. You don't sound very happy about the change. No, but its change is not very clear. It started changing, but it is not complete. So okay. that's the whole problem.
Okay. Well, we are out of time, Dr. Reddy. It was a pleasure speaking with you. you. But I will look forward to a book where perhaps you will sometime tell us uh, more juicier anecdotes between uh, the powers in Reserve Bank, in Finance Ministry and in other ministries. Thank you very much for participating in this discussion. Thank you.